What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Extreme Lifestyle Living Podcast. Today's guest is Joel, and I was excited as fuck to have him on here. And to be honest, I got him over to the house, and we just started chopping it up and having a really good conversation. So I just hit record and just started the conversation. So this episode is going to be a little bit different. But as it starts, it's just going to be right into the conversation, and I hope you enjoy. work on something that you actually love and I have a very like I'm very grateful for my situation I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing without like you know my father helping me out oh yeah but like on like you know this year I'm already on par to make more than I did when I was working full-time at FedEx which is fucking insane so like my first year my goal was 20k so I started in July and I did just over 10 from July, and right now I'm at about 12 for the year, so it's not a lot at all. Yeah. But I have a big contract lined up, a possible contract lined up. They start recording. Yeah. Okay, I just make sure. I know. Okay. I have a big, like, possible contract. It's like, we've talked about it, and we're going to run, like, a two-month uh, test to make sure that we're the right fit for each other and like, you know, it's a lot of money on their end, so, but, you know. Life changing. Not life changing, but it's like, to be in that situation where it's like, mm. really like, starting to become real, where it's like, hmm, this is like a minimum wage, full year salary contract that we're mm -hmm. talking about. Right. And like, yeah. getting to that point where like, my other biggest job besides that was, you know, two grand, four grand. We're talking about, like, you know, upwards of, like, 20 to 25 yeah. by mid-October, end of October. You know, I'm going to get to see and work with a bunch of cool artists. I meet a bunch of new people. Like, I've been working. I've done some stuff with this guy, Billy Comer. He does all of, like, he's a huge, like, event planner. He he threw that Conway show oh, uh, a yeah, yeah. week and a half ago. Best show Halifax has had. Like, you know, just making the connections, meeting people is... I w like you said earlier, I wouldn't trade mine for someone else's any day. Yeah, it's crazy too, because like, it's I love that I work start hit record as soon as you start saying like it's literally like word for word how it starts off is that when you like to work on something you actually love and like happy like you're just grateful to be in your situation, and it's dope because it's like we're both able to speak to that. Because I remember the first time we linked up, like our like, first photo shoot that we had. We yeah, last year. Not. What do you know? Do you remember the date of that? I think it would have been uh, around June. Yeah, it would have been around. It was like because I quit FedEx at that point. It was June. Or, think, it was June or July. Yeah, it was June or July. Just last year though, so we're not even in June yet. Yeah, no, so ten even, months ago, man. Ten months ago, you picked up the camera, not for the first time, but like ten months ago, I took it serious. Uh, I bought my first cam. I bought the camera that I started. I bought it brand new. I was like, if so I like buy it new, invested into it. If I buy it new, I'll probably like I'll take it serious. You know, putting all the money down because I'm a Kijiji fiend. I <laughs> buy and sell off Kijiji, and if I buy something for a good deal, I have no problem selling it for a good deal. Yeah, exactly. I don't like, like you know, but if I'm buying something that's used like fifteen hundred bucks, but I buy it new for twenty three hundred bucks, I don't want to take that eight hundred dollar loss. So I want to take it serious in my mind. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, it's like so psychology. That was like the kickstart, and then, you know, I bought that, and I originally wanted to do photography. I didn't even want to do video. Yeah, because we were doing that. I remember because that's why you were taking photos of me. Like we were taking high little photos. I just wanted to start doing portraits and stuff. Yeah, it's amazing and, that. And it was just one of those things. Like, one day I just got up and went out. And, you know, um, oh, it's that park, like the Look Off in Bedford. It's up in that subdivision. Um, there's so many nooks and crannies up there. It's like, there's like a look off you can look over. I think I know what you're talking Bedford. about. Though. I don't like, remember. I don't want to say the richer area, but like the house is big. Oh yeah, it's in a nice area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, I just went there and I made a video there, just by myself. I just wanted to go and do something. I feel like I remember that. Yeah, because I think you did an edit out and you're like, it was like part of the streets. It was part of like the signs of like. Yeah, the, the first one was the sign, the blue sign, and then I went and did one out at um, the Moose out in. Uh, Cow Bay. Cow Bay. Yeah. And I just started doing videos then, and then a friend of mine was like, hey, I, this guy wants to, like, 
he wants a video of like the, him making a couple cocktails for whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? Like I have all the gear. I found like a, a big ass gimbal that I had from four or five years ago that's just been sitting in my house. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Let's do it. And I brought it out, shot that video, and I was like, man, I actually really like this. This looks way better than I could have thought. And when was that? So June, July is when we were just discussed. This would have been like October. September, October, November is when I started doing those other videos. So I started that's even crazy videos. too, because you can't even say that you're standing here doing video for like video shoots for a whole year or ten months. Like you're me. Well, like video, like video shoots. I did my first music video April fifteenth of last year, so it just rolled over a year and a month. Yeah. But like I look back at that, and it and they're not bad. They weren't bad music videos. Yeah. But there's like a lot of elements that I've realized. Like, since I've started doing it, like, seriously, mm-hmm. you know, like, if you just saw that one I did with Brandon and Kai, and you put that compared to the first one I did with Brandon and the first one I did with Kai, it is, like, it's night and day. It really is. Yeah, no, it is. That's why. And, and yeah. you know, it's not the gear to the most part. Like, the gear definitely helps. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't spend all that money on my camera just because it's, like, not that much better. Like, it is, it is that extra step, and it is that much better. But there's every, like, all the other elements of, like, learning camera movements, learning what works and what doesn't, like, what works for, like, fast movement and, you know, all that stuff that I've just happened, like, you know, I've done, like, almost 50 music videos in a year and a month. Yeah, I know. I don't know anyone else. There's no one, to my knowledge, who's, like, putting that much work into music videos in Nova Scotia. And, like, there may be people who are doing it on, like, production budget, like... Like, actual yeah. productions, there's people that are way busier than me, probably doing way better than me, but that's not what I, that's yeah. not what I want to do. Yeah, well, I'd love to get there one day. Well, that kind of goes back to our first conversation, but you wouldn't trade it in for any, any other situation. Nope, not a Because it's like, there, is, there more, is there people in videography that are being more successful, but that depends on what your definition of success is, you know what I mean? Do, like, a well, financial? For, like, um, Riker and Matt, they do Grove Productions two of the best dudes and they're absolutely crushing it they killed it last year they're on par to crush it again this year Mm -hmm. you know they have like a like they have like a style that they absolutely kill Mm -hmm. like a different theme but like it's still like you know not music videos Riker did actually I think he DP'd a music video for Dave Sampson but like it's not something that they do regularly Mm-hmm. And now I'm starting to realize, like, I want to do more stuff like they do. Mm-hmm. You know, like, a little bit of, like, commercial, but still, you know, like, stylized yeah, you for yourself. No, not 100%. Like, I was actually watching a video with, uh, I think it was Jack Parlow was in an interview with him, and they were talking about, like, just when you start collaborating with other artists and other people that do similar work that you do. Mm-hmm. It's crazy how everyone has, like, a different view on certain avenues. Like, or a different workflow. Yeah, exactly, Dude, right? Workflow is huge. When I... Um, when I did that video with Quake, that nose ring video, we had uh, yeah. Brittany and Amy directed it, and they do editing for uh, Accomplice, I think it's called, is like the company they work for, and they, like, they edit all the time. They're phenomenal at what they do. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, I saw their workflow that they had when they were editing, because we would pop in like t- two or three times before the video was done, and just looking how she had it laid out, she really has like yeah, this levels. organization there's levels to this shit yeah. and i'm not on that level but yeah. the workflow that i use for myself works for me it's like 100 it's it's completely like you know if if i used her workflow for a month i'd probably get a lot more comfortable but like looking at it right now i'm like damn i'm really far behind yeah, yeah, yeah. but like i can't it's again can't compare to like not someone else's you know yeah it's funny, I was actually said that to Emma this morning because, uh, like, even us recording this episode takes it in my living room right now. Like, she said, like, we just talked, and she's like, seems like you've got like, your workflow down pat. Because now that, like, I've officially launched the business, like I said, like, I'm, I'm out there, I'm talking about it. Yeah. There's nothing I got to do. A lot of it with projects, too, I mean, you know how you know how that is, where it comes to you can't really save certain things because you don't want to release dates, tell people who you're working mm-hmm. with until projects are released. But now that I'm officially out there, it's like, I got my workflow, and it's just like, Monday, I got this right rhythm, Tuesday, well, Wednesday, Thursday. And here's the thing. The first one that you do is never going to be as good as the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth one. 
I see a, like a lot of creators who do video. They're like, if you feel like you don't have like that fire or that drive to mm -hmm. work, just go and do something that's not for work. Do it for pleasure. Do it for yourself. I could like when I started doing those little videos, um, out in the cow bay and stuff, they're terrible. We had that fire. But I wanted to make it, and yeah. that is what I can look at as being like, cool, this is like block number one. Now we're on block like 50. Mm -hmm. And like you look at the difference, it's like you had to go through those steps and you had to enjoy that journey of doing all the videos mm -hmm. and, you know, the journey of like not enjoying working with people and like, mm -hmm. you know, there's definitely That's people that I like to work with more than others. Like when I work with Brandon, it's completely different than when I work with someone who hits me up in the DM mm -hmm. just because me and, you know, me and Brent have like seven, eight something videos. Mm -hmm. We're, you know, we're friends outside of work yeah. and whatever. So get that flow. Get that rhythm. It, it, yeah. It's just different. And I don't know, man, like I've also realized like when I work on something that I'm actually passionate about so much more uh, satisfying and I, find myself wanting to finish it more yeah like i had what was it there was some like commercial ish style video that i had to do i was like man like i'm just not really interested in it and then i shot a music video after i shot that and it was like editing and the music video was done day and a half <laughs> yeah because yeah. i love it because i love cutting it together i love seeing what works where and i love like that like like cutting it together it's one of those things it's just like you know it's your baby it's your masterpiece it's your that's what i love man that, and that's like that's where i'm starting to get to the point where i'm like supplementing music videos with like some commercial work i've been doing some stuff i i just finished some some work with dormy workshop they do like leather head covers for for golf clubs and stuff and that's sick and accessories and and the guys there are awesome i love all the guys that work there Kevin and Elliot so this bag was Elliot made this bag for me and I made a video for him and he okay. literally just he made uh, the whole thing he 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 designed the out like the layout of the bag did all the leather you know we had a consultation for the color that Mustang leather on the inside okay. there and then the okay, red yeah the red liner on the inside we had a whole meeting about it and then he showed the video to his boss because he works at Dormy yeah. And the boss was just like, yo, like, this guy seems like he's hungry, and he's like, he Bro, has a good made product. I actually want one of these. I actually want to get that guy's information, because I was looking for one of these to put my laptop in when I go and do my shit, and it's yeah. like, I couldn't find one, like, that style. Yeah. And uh, it's hard as hell to find them, and I don't, want to, I don't want to get it online. Dude, I wear that thing every day. But the thing is, like, the connection, like, I just, I've known Elliot since, like, 2015. Got he it. lived with a friend of mine. We used to just always see him. He made some patches for me, like, back in the day for some jackets. And, and you know, he he put it, he put his, he showed his boss the video because he was, he was pumped on it. Mm -hmm. And that just happened to bring, you know, a job that, like, I fin we finished, we sent off the finals yesterday, actually. And we're trying to work on another video already. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, you know, doing this kind of commercial work isn't on the exact like top of what I want to do mm -hmm. but like I love doing it because I still get to create and I can supplement like being able to like you know do a cheaper music video mm -hmm. because I want to do it yeah right? yeah yeah Cause so like this extra income and extra projects where you don't have to put the pressure on those other projects you can give exactly. you more to play on the passion aspect of it well it's like me and Brandon are trying to storyboard one right now and I'm like you know I go to Montreal on Thursday so I was like, man, like, I don't know, we might be able to get it done before we go, but, like, if we don't, you know. But that's the crazy thing, though. You get the fire and the passion behind it that, like, like, today's Saturday, and you leave on Thursday. So that's, what, like, three three solid days you can be. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and obviously in between, you're going to be fucked up. Like, I want to try to see it four full days. And since you get the passion, you can do 12 hours each day until you leave Thursday and not even bat an eyelash. Yeah, Catch well, and that's the thing, man. I'm starting to realize it's, it catches up to me now. It's like after not working, working, and then I'll, uh, you know, have like four full like shoot days in a row or like shoot and edit and, and like just work on the mind. Like I don't think people completely understand. Like when you work for yourself, like your mind is always going. People are always like, man, you're always on your phone. I'm like, dude, I, all my clients literally come from word of mouth. People, people hit me on the DM. Yeah. People... 
you know, someone gives someone my number and they're like, you know, like want to check out my work. I, you know, I message I message directors in the states every day, every couple of days. Like, yeah, you gotta have your DM process. You know, Cole Bennett, like someday, I'm telling you right now, I'll do some work with him at some point in the future. But I, it's one of those things. Like I message people on his team all the time. I'm like, you know, White Trash Tyler. He's one of those guys who's like, really just found what he wants out of you know and he went through the same thing he just like pa- like packed up went to LA and and just yeah. did the damn thing it's and so he crazy. absolutely crushed it, it it's, fucking, it's so crazy you hear about that all the time and it's like I've always thought about moving out and doing shit cause it's like I hear people like go to Kelowna for the fitness industry and stuff Kelowna's yeah. like the big area down in Cali then some places even in Texas there's some stuff popping up and it's just like I just can't I, I love it here too much like I, 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 Nova Scotia hits different. Nova Scotia yeah. summer is, is peak. We kind of get like a lot. Like we, we like there's this rumor we don't get a summer. We get a summer. We don't get a summer. But it's like we get like six to eight months of solid sweater weather sometimes. You know what I mean? Well, like, I find like right now. So the last like two weeks have been fucking phenomenal. Yeah. I'm juiced at how nice it is out. The sun's up at like six six thirty. And now down to nine nine thirty. Dude, like, I wake up. I'm legitimately awake at six o'clock almost yeah. every day. Natural alarm clock. I was supposed to be up for five thirty. I was going to do some work with a friend of mine. He just does like landscaping. I was supposed to be up at five thirty. Set the alarm five thirty, five forty five, five twenty five. I just sprung up out of sleep. I was like, I'm awake. What's up? Turn my turn my alarms off. I was just like up. Oh. Yeah. And I love it. Well, I, kind of, I feel like that kind of ties into the passion thing, though, because it's like oh, the thing you said where it was like, because one big thing about when people work for themselves, they, people that work nine to five jobs, let's say, like I have a nine to five job and I still work, I have my own business, I like doing both. Yeah. And because like, but you're doing the smart process to get what you want out of life. Yeah. 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 You're going to work and then eventually there's going to be a transition where it's like, cool, now I'm going to be part time and I'm going to do the, the coaching and the, yeah. The fitness side of everything and you know once you once you line up like you know enough clients to take over you know what you're what you're making now mm-hmm. then it's just gonna be it it's the seamless transition See, i did thing, that with fedex the thing with good uh the thing with like the, like the thing with self making was like like i make good money with my client base honestly like i could drop down the car time but i genuinely love what i do like you know what i mean like and that's, that's there's the, no reason to leave if you love it. Then that's what I'm saying, and that's one big thing that people don't understand is like, because I'm I work in a bro. People can be completely happy working a nine to five, working at Tim's, yeah. working at whatever. My buddy's mother has been working at the Tim Hortons down by my house <laughs> yeah, since I was in junior <laughs> high, bro. And you go in there, she's and she, the same energy every bro, time. Every time she sees me, oh hey Joel, how are you? Like yeah. loves it, and you know that's that's totally up to her, mm-hmm. and. There's no judgment on someone who wants to do that. 100%. But I will judge someone when they want to, like, ditch everything and, like, just go for the bag. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. if you... The thing about it is if you don't like the journey, it's not worth it. Mm-hmm. If you hate your life, if you're mentally unable to, like, deal with yourself because you're chasing the bag, yeah. the bag can be huge. That's fine. But you're going to hate the journey, and it's not worth it at the end of the day. Life isn't about, like, don't get me wrong, money's important. 100%. Everyone needs a little bit of money, and everyone could have a little bit more. Yeah. But, like, if you're happy in, like, 90% of your day-to-day life, Bucket. you're winning. Yeah, 100%. If you're happy with, like, you know, obviously everything could be a little bit better. You could have a house instead of an apartment. You could have a nicer car. Yeah. But... You're still like you still enjoy what you're doing in life. Yeah, and that's that's, a, that's like a huge thing that I've you know, the last year for me, really really hit home. Why well, what's uh, my biggest thing with that? Because going back to like you said, you're learning now that you're passionate, and it's like you work twelve hours every day, seven days a week for months on end, because you just love it, and then you don't go to sleep till you're burnt out. Like oh fuck, like, like and it's like what what is work? Exactly. So this is, learn this is where definition. it comes down to like <laughs> loving what you do. And that's why people say like love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Like you work. Yeah. You're but working. I, like, I feel like you're well, tired. Like, well, like I feel like we work like I feel like I work every day from six AM until about seven eight PM. Bro, every yesterday day. I uh 
finished shooting, went home, dumped all my memory cards, charged all my batteries, got everything ready, went to a show for 10.30, left at 2 in the morning, got to sleep for 2.30, woke up at 6.30, left my house at 7.30 to be at Spinko to film for Johnny at East Coast Kicks. Yeah. 8 o'clock, what is it now? You know, I got here at 1 o'clock, 8 to 1 shooting and... and it's like one day. Here we are. Yeah. I, I, I've slept four hours, I still feel fine. See, and that's the difference that people don't understand where it's like, people will sit back and they're in chasing the bag. They think that we're like, they think like, oh, Joel just got it, something, somehow you just had this land in your lap. Me with my business, someone can be think it just landed on my lap. You know? I didn't get lucky. Not at all, not at all, that's what I'm saying. If, if you look back, like my Instagram looks like it's a little bit extensive. It's like a hundred and something posts in a year and a half, two years. It's like who else is who else put out the the number of videos that I've done, music videos. I'm not like people make a ton, people do way more content than me. But I'm like sure. when it comes down to like full to my time. niche to my niche because like I I love music videos and I would love to be able to like successfully ride on that for my life. Mm -hmm. Right now it's not sustainable just as that, which is fine. Because you can't just want everything with a snap of a finger. Like if I, get the if if I just you know didn't make you know a hundred k in my first year, oh you know it's probably not worth it. No, I set realistic goals. Yep. And you know, I'm I've I've hit them so far. I have my eyes like you know. Onto onto the bigger yep. projects, and I'm you know starting to write up proposals, I'm starting to like... You're actually, you're handling business now. I'm starting to figure it out, and it's only been a year, so my thing now is like, what's two years look like? Yeah. What's five oh, years man. look like, man? That's all our DMs look like, talking shit to each other. If if I can, you know, hold this up for another year, uh, you know, I, I'm confident in myself. I'm not, you know... Well, let's jump right into that thing, because you're one year in, when we're talking about what's next. <laughs> So within one the, year, man. So within one year. And it's crazy, too, because, like, for anyone that's listening, because when they listen, like, we've known each other since high school. So, yeah. like, that would have been, like, around at least 2010, 2012. Because when I was in grade 11, so it would have been 2011. Yeah, so in 2011, when we would have known each other. So that's going on over 10 years. Yeah. So, like, the first majority of that, like, we didn't even, I wouldn't say we didn't stay in contact, but we didn't stay away from each other now that we just had different lives. No, it was just, dude, and that's the thing. Everyone's just doing their own thing. Everyone's living their own life. Everyone's got their own path. But like, you know, still see you in the gym yeah. and we'd always chop it up. And then there was a couple of years through the middle, like 2014, 2015 to like yeah, we were all you know, 2018, 2019, everyone's doing their own thing. Yeah. And the reason why I like to bring that up is because like, I remember when I met with you, I think that was like one of my first photo shoots. I was like, bro, like I got to start taking this shit more serious. I was like, yeah. And you had a camera just shooting the shit we went got food and stuff. And I remember even then at that point, I was confused, not confused, but I was going through one of my first transitions because... That would have been June, July for you to just like, okay, let me turn it on. For me, that was like six, seven months. Like, that was me just like, oh shit, like everything I, I like last January, like when I wrote out my goal list around the time I was linking up with you was when I was actually completing it all. Mm -hmm. I was like, holy shit. I was like, like, what's one year? What's one year like look like from there? And we're going on this June now from that year. So we're going on a year from, yeah. So like we're talking with a fucking idiot, like a year from then, like we're moving, like I'm moving into a house. Like I'll have my full gym in the garage. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, when me and you had this conversation, you're like, pictures, videos, I'm not sure. Me, I was like, I don't even know if I want to be an online trainer, online coach of any sort. Back then, But I, you did love it. That's, like, that's the, the thing. thing. I was like, you like the camera, you had the passion. With me, I knew I like to help people in some regard with that mental health and the physical. And it's crazy to see we're both sitting here a year from today. We're both like, like you're going to be doing this shit for the rest of your life. That's the goal. I'm going to be doing this shit for the rest of my life. That's and that's why the narrative of the conversation to me gets so hyped up. Like, even I said jokes that most of our Instagram messages are like you'll be at a gym in the morning i'll reply just fire emojis and then we'll be like wait just wait till six months wait till three months wait till nine mm -hmm. months wait till nine years and it's like that's the energy that's fucking captivating that's the thing that's like fucking sick. man if you told me last year when i was working at fedex <laughs> that i would have quit fedex which is a great job but it was fine for what it is but mm -hmm. you know work like to work for a company and you know that's like that would be a great spot to just sit and work for the rest of my life mm -hmm. But something about, like, I just it felt right to take the leap. Mm -hmm. There was just one day my boss messaged me to come in early. I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to come in anymore <laughs> ever, actually. And he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, I won't be in ever again. 
<laughs> and that and low key, that was the best feeling ever. Oh man, the day that uh, I I know exactly how that feels because I remember when I was working at Good Life and I was there for five five and a half six years. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not like obviously like not gonna say there with shit on a company because like I love what I did, learned a lot, mm-hmm. but. That day that I stepped out of that club, like out of the gym, out of the, like, knew, just fucking knew that I was not going back ever again. That it's feeling, a different type of. I I think like I, you feel invigorating, like man. You're like reborn. You feel like you're reborn again because you're like you get like adrenaline almost. And, so, and like you know, the first month, like I quit in the the first week of June. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't really make a dollar all of June. But since I went into June, I got my extra. I got my paycheck from FedEx, obviously, and then I got the bonus because I passed the fiscal year starts June first. Mm-hmm. So I finished that whole fiscal year, and they paid me for that, and you know that kept me going for that month. And then the next month, I think I did. Actually, we can see. I can pull it up. While you're looking at it, it's actually funny that the topic that we're talking about, me and Trevor talked about that when he was here. Trevor's the man. And, I uh, love talking with Trevor. <laughs> yeah, I fucking love him. But we had the conversation about the same thing you're talking about. Like, you have no money. You need to make this money. You, know, you get family. hungry. Yeah, and it's like that tenacity to go out and get the money yeah. for your business with what you're fucking doing is a different type of mentality. June, I didn't make a dollar. July, I made $1,500. First month. You See, but that like, let's talk about that for a second because like, this is the fucking thing that we're talking about. Is no, there's no issue. I'm gonna get real hyped down. There is no issue working a nine to fucking five. No, but not at all. Ninety nine percent of the people that are gonna do the nine to five will not take that June up to the middle of July, four to six weeks with no fucking pay to gamble to get that fifteen hundred to go. And and don't get me wrong, everyone's situation is different. If I had if I had to pay. What rent is right now with COVID and housing being such a bitch in Halifax? Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to do it. I would have dipped into my savings, and if I, and I would have spent most of my savings that I have right now to have committed and done this, which is a hard thing to swallow. Thinking about it, looking at it, be, looking at the number, being like, "Oh yeah, like I would have spent twelve grand in rent mm-hmm. just to get where I'm at." You yeah. know, tw- like. Is it worth it? Well, I subjective to everyone. Yeah. Well, like I mean, well, I'll speak on that because we're talking about the same topic. Yeah. I paid. I've been paying rent since I was virtually between seventeen and twenty-one. Oh yeah, you were early. You know what I mean? So it's like, oh, I think we calculated it. Me and my couple of friends, we joke. It's like since I've been paying rent, anywhere between sixty to eighty grand, my lifetime I've paid rent. So yeah, I'm sitting here talking to you in my house on my podcast that we're going to release it. I'm telling you, fuck the nine to five. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's 100% subjective, but there's workarounds. And if you got time to watch Netflix, you got time to go on Instagram and send somebody fucking memes. You got time to go talk to, if you're a guy. You got time to start growing your own business. That's what I'm saying. And that's my biggest thing is I love doing men's mental health. The guys, those say I don't have time to get in shape, run on time to mentality, lock it in and go for their passions. But they got time to DM 100 girls a day. You know what I mean? Like they got time to go out and be lustful and do all this stuff or go downtown and hang with their boys. Like, mm. take three weeks off. Sit in the fucking house. Like I remember my first program. Sit in sit in the house and see if you can do it. See if you can sit in the set, sit in the house with yourself for three weeks. See what happens. See what you think of. Yeah. See, You're gonna leave see how you though. feel. Yeah. Like it's one of those things that's like underrated. Can you sit down with yourself and really deal with it? Yeah. And like that is, dude. When um. Like this winter was like low key tough for me because I didn't have a whole lot of work. My woman left me, and I was just there like, yeah, okay, um, nice, what am I going to do? But, like, at this point, did I we, am... Did we link before we had the photo shoot? Because I feel like we linked one time before. In Brad, like, I think we saw each other somewhere. Yeah, we chat, chopped it up or something. Talk, because I feel like we had a conversation around that, or even it was just like I was hanging out, and we were just, like, talking shit about something. Maybe it was, I don't know, but... We probably did, no, because... Cause, uh, she was working one of those like monetary jobs where you can go and work 14 hours a day for someone else and make good money, but mm-hmm. mental health's gonna take a huge kick. Yeah. And you know, if that's the, if that's what they want to do, then you know, I'm not here to stop anyone. Like you said, it's subjective to their life and what they want to do. And I think that's what people just need to be aware of because even like earlier talking to Emma, like I love talking about Emma on here because it's like I'm, I love talking about relationships because it's like. Everybody thinks they're right, and every 
relationship for the most part as they like what it is like but it's, it's very hard for like most people in a relationship to have open communication very easy flow you know well I mean? it's understanding the open communication and everyone it's again a subjective thing like everyone is going to see something different mm -hmm. than their partner mm -hmm. their partner has gone through their trials and tribulations of their relationships in the past you've done your own they're clashing are they going to mesh well together i find a lot of people who have like the same issues when they're younger get along very well when they're older like yeah it's funny because me and emma don't have anything similar to the way we grew up but something about us like just the way we like carry ourselves like works really well together well it means that your parents taught you about point blank <laughs> yeah you know like that's the crazy thing you know what i mean yeah <laughs> but what i was trying to say with that was like literally about like how most people will like look at you or look at me and like prejudge these things based on it's easy for them to i hope this. people think that i'm lucky and they think oh, all yeah. this stuff that's good for them well that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying like it's okay to look at other people and be like oh yeah it's easy for you to do nine to five or you need to leave the nine to five but one thing I would challenge anyone listener, anyone to like fucking in their own brain would be to like look at yourself internally before you think you got it easy or I got it easy. Because like, again, go back to your thing, like you said, you worked hard as fuck for everything you got. You didn't get no handouts, but then like you're saying, you're grateful for the fact that like if you did have to dip in your savings. You I'm beyond it. grateful for my situation. Yeah. But I didn't take a single handout, a single anything it. from anyone. That's I went out and got it. Exactly, and that's what that's what I want to I want to know is that that's what we're talking about. Doesn't matter what your situation is; it's just be a, take ownership over it, use what you can to get ahead. I was doing video. I did like probably eight, nine, ten music videos while I was working at FedEx, and just like the time, like I'd get off work, I would work ten to seven. I didn't have enough time in the morning to do anything. I didn't have enough time in the evening to do anything really. Like, I could, but it was just one of those things I was like, man, I know, like, I know I can do this, and I see what other people are producing in the city. Mm -hmm. Just like, man, what's holding me back? One thing, FedEx. I was like, you know what, with my situation, screw it. The jump was the best thing I could have done. And let, let, let's leave from right there. A year straight in New York. You're sitting in New York. <laughs> like, I gotta jump into it because, like, yeah. I was. Uh, we've all watched freestyles on Sway for oh. years. Well, like, every, everyone tunes into Shade Forty Five. That sways. Sways the that's man. That's Like I remember the first time I got my 2015 Malibu when I was 21. <laughs> oh man! And I had the you had this XM radio. <laughs> they, radio. They give you the three months and you're just bumping it, and then as soon as it's over, you're like, yep. Yeah. yeah. Peace. So like that's yeah. So like. It's just, that's a monumental moment. Not only for yourself, but all the Quake as well. Dude, there's a whole, the backstory behind all of this is nuts. So, Quake originally uh, freestyled for Sway when COVID popped off. Mercules got him on. And, and Sway hit him. Sway was just like, yo, when the world opens up, you're coming. Like, come, like, pull up. Yeah. And so, I... Bro, someone like Quake, someone who's like so for the culture, mm -hmm. and someone like Sway who is the culture. Mm -hmm. Bro, he heard that. He was like, "Yeah, no, like I'm 100 percent taking you up on." Yeah, 100 percent. So, fast forward, it was probably like within within the month that I quit FedEx, Quake just randomly DM'd me one morning, like seven in the morning. He was like, "Yo, like I fuck with your work," and I'm sitting here as like someone who's like periodically like tuned in with quake's music for like you know That's since i was in high years, school yeah. man ever you'd always hear someone talk about quake matthews you'd see his shows down at aldo new landing and all that <laughs> shit right like so i was like man like well, i feel I, like you always like, like when classified like you'd always classified pat stay and quake were always like you know what i mean like i feel like you just always heard those names in sync mm -hmm. you know what i mean like but like quake was like a little bit different Cause he, I don't know, he just seemed like he was like more in tune with like exactly where I was in life. Like he's, you know, closer in age, I think. Don't take that the wrong way. <laughs> Anyone else who's listening. But no, no, I get it. Like there's, well, there's man. It's it just seemed things. like he was like closer, more personable for like directly me. Like, you know, he's what, seven? Well, I think he's like six man. years older than me. Well, I think, I think it goes to this, the same testament we're talking about. Like why you ran in your fucking type. And, like, even with me and Bream, I looked up with Brandon another day and got one of his sweaters. And it's, like, 
it's like when you have those conversations, even us talking right now, when you have those conversations and you guys can bounce things off of each other, you guys just feel that mutual fire. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's what we're talking about. Like you and Quake, you got it. You and Brandy, you got well, it. Well, and that's the thing, because like it was just out of the blue. Like Moose uh, like was shooting all the Quake stuff, and there was just one day that he wasn't answering. Yeah, I remember and, you told me that. And it was that morning. Like, so Quake DM'd me that morning. was just like, yo, like I fuck with your work. And I was like... Yo, I fuck with your word. What? <laughs> like, this is sick. Like the fanboy heard. And then he hit me up at like five PM that day. And was like, yo, what do you like what's your schedule like? And I was like, I had something to do on the weekend. I was like, that's it. Like, you know, what's up? Hey, this was this was earlier in your career. This was like, this was July. It started July. Yeah. yeah this yeah. was the first video I did with Quake for that No Friends in the Industry one. Yeah. It was a freestyle, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh so he just hit me up at like five something, six in the afternoon, it was like, yo, like do you want to just go and shoot a video? And I was like, duh. And I just <laughs> instantly drove over to his house, picked him up. We went to your Prudhoe, shot that whole video. It was done that night. He posted it. And somehow Drake saw it. Because Drake had a song on Certified Lover Boy called No Friends in the Industry. And so he, he DM'd Quake. was like, yo, well, I have a song with the same title. It's crazy. And they, and they you know, chatted for a bit and... And uh, that was just the start of it. And, That's you know, so me, me and Quake work really well together because we both have, like, we both want to, like, when we do it, we, like, lock in and crush it for, like, two days. And that's also one of the reasons I think we work really well in New York together. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like full circle, I've, you know, been working on and off with Quake since July. Around February, he sends me a text. He's like, yo, book off these dates. We're going to New York. I was like, what? <laughs> He's like, Sway. I was like, no. Don't even, like... Yeah, don't even, like... You know, it just... It, like, it's one of those things, like, it ha- like, new to a career, new to a business, doing it all yourself, and just watching this kind of, like, fall in your lap, just because, you know... Not one Working thing, well not together... One fell in your lap. Well, like, when I say that, it's just, like fell in my lap because I've been working with Quake for X amount of time. We have this, like, relationship, like, this work relationship that goes very well. And then, you know, when he brought that up, it was just like, okay, like, this is actually serious. Yeah, you did. So, you know, we went down for nine days. Damn, so it was not even like a... It it wasn't like like you left on a Thursday and did a weekend. You guys... Well, so what it was supposed to be was we got there on Wednesday... He was supposed to do Sway on Thursday. Mm. Sway was out of town for some family thing, so we rescheduled for next Thursday. But we were mm. supposed to leave on Tuesday. Ah, uh-huh. So it just happened to work out. We rescheduled Sway for next Thursday. He got. We went to the 300 studio. We went to Fetty Wap studio. Damn. And we. He did this whole like live band thing. It was bomb. Like they just like listened to his music one time, and then they just played it, and it was it was, they were phenomenal. That's crazy. And he so crushed talented. he crushed that. And then when we were he was done that, we were in this we were just sitting there in the, in the lobby of the studio. And Fetty Wap walked in. Jesus. Fetty Wap walked in, ignored everyone else, dapped me up, and kept walking into the studio. And I'm still I still don't understand what happened. So Fetty Wap came in and dapped only you up, no one else. And just kept walking. Didn't say nothing to nobody else. I don't know why. I have no clue. It just, like, that, it was it was nuts. And yeah. he's, like, the first, like, big, big celebrity, like, rapper that I've actually, like, seen in person. I've seen, like, you know, I've been to, like, 88 Glam. I saw a Juice World concert, but, like, that's a concert. And I'm, yeah, like, yeah. actually just seeing someone. And I was like, man, like, I don't want to fan out, but, like, damn, this is Trap Queen. This is, like, that, Yeah, bro, when I moved this, in with my Bro, mom, that's a like, diamond record, like. Oh, man, when I moved in with my mom, like, like me and my little brother and, like, Julian, like, fuck, man. Like, it gets Trap Queen, that whole fucking uh, 17, I can't remember, 1738 crew. Yeah. They had, like, fucking murdered that summer. That's crazy. That's a, what, imagine, you, know, you might be shooting one of his videos here soon. Bro, well, and the thing is, that wouldn't have happened if Sway didn't have to, re- if we didn't reschedule Sway. Because they told Quake we could have went and done it. Yeah. But just Sway wouldn't have been there. And it's like, mm, there's no point in even doing it. Yeah. You gotta meet Sway. He's exactly. the, he is the culture. Yeah. He straight, straight up, bro. He was telling us stories about Biggie and Pac and all this yeah. stuff. And we were like, like, you know, we went, like, the studio that we were shooting at was in Harlem. Yes. Like, we were like, 
we were just in it and it was just like you just felt the vibrance of it man like the culture in New York is crazy when we went to New York uh, in November I think it was like three years ago now but we went to we did the Harlem tour and I Harlem tour yeah there's a Harlem bus tour like you can go on it I know it sounds stupid but we got it into get into Harlem and then we just walked around and stuff and it was like it's just like crazy where you can actually see all the things that you see on Instagram. Even like the memorials, the plaques. Bro, like, so the one that was the craziest was Queensbridge. I'm telling you. I can't imagine. Queensbridge, like, you know, that's like Nas, Mob Deep. Yeah, you know. fuck. You were in there. You were there. Well, like we didn't go in, but no, like, like we walked around. We went to go see like the Nas did. mural. It was like 40th and Vernon, I think it was. <laughs> oh, and like... Quake said it too, like in one of the, like, cause when we were down there, we shot vlogs every day. He said it, he was like, um, you know, when you, when you hear all this music, you kind of like get a picture of it. You see all the music videos of all like the, you know, the big like hundred person mob, like behind you, like rapper style in the projects. Like, cool. We j literally just saw that exact building. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just we fly. saw what it actually is. Like we saw some lady strung out. Com like coming over to us saying like crazy crazy stuff yeah and we were just like sorry she's like don't fucking say sorry and i'm just like okay like you are obviously a different breed like we are nova scotians we are nice even like people that are in rough situations are still like pretty nice yeah for what it is yeah. she was like talking about how they're killing people and like she's looking out for us and i'm just like bro Thing for you. Well, it's crazy too. Even seeing on the news, like the difference between like how things are handled in Canada with the how fucked up the, the world is, a little bit with mm. inflation and money. And then you see like well, you see L.A. Like people are getting robbed left, right, center in L.A. Downtown. Like these things are. L.A. is dangerous now. Well, even see, there's even a lot of car uh, chases around here. There's one down down on uh, I think it was just yesterday or Thursday it was just down on Dutch Village Road, like where uh, the pizza like there's a little con. Yeah. The guy went down over the fucking uh, curb and everything. Oh. Like, just trying to get away. But, uh... Today. So, I mean, I, I'm already mind blown of the fact that you shook Fetty Hip Hop's hand. Did you just see if he had an uh, ankle monitor on? <laughs> and seeing that fucking trend. No, I don't know, on. man. I wasn't paying attention. It all happened as a blur. That's that, so whole, that whole day was a blur. Cause so Is that the same day you've seen? Like, that they did the freestyle and everything? No, so... Well, he did that uh, unplugged 300. Like, 300 Entertainment was the studio, right? That's crazy. So 300 Unplugged is like the live band style uh, oh, okay. shoot. So I don't know when that's going to come out for him, but it is there. His mm. Sway freestyle came out last week. Yeah. And um, like even like the how we even got that, like, man, everything happens for a reason. He had this guy, Phil Cho, the nicest dude. Phil is the man. We were just like... Like, they they talked on Instagram for a bit. Uh, Quake followed him for whatever reason. They still can't piece together how it happened. And then Phil was like, yo, who's this verified guy from Canada following me? They, like, DM'd back and forth about, like, random stuff. And then just happened that there was an open spot for 300 Unplugged. And Quake was like, yo, we're here. Let's do it. Damn. And so we, you know, we're walking out in Jersey. Like, like, okay, like, we don't belong here. But we just see Phil, you know, he's just sitting out in front of the studio smoking, and we pull up, chop it up with him. By the end of it, we, you know, he invites us out to this bar. We went out to, it's like Den Social or something out in, so in New York. God, it was nuts. And they, they bought us, like, they bought crazy bottles for us to all drink, and we were like, man, it was, that day was nuts. It's surreal. It was nuts. It's insane. So speak to Bo that, uh, because he watched Quake do the freestyle live. Mm hmm So speak about that. What? Oh man, <laughs> dude, just like the experience was was just nice. It was just nice. We we were sitting outside waiting. They had another guy in there, Dom McCall. He's he's the man too. I think he said he's like super. Like I think he's from Harlem. But he like everyone there was good shit. We're just sitting outside. A car pulls up. Sway hops out the car. He's looking around, like you know. He pops out, comes, daps Quake up. Says, you know, "This, you know, here we are." Yeah. And uh, just getting in that studio, talking with everyone. 
And Quake just has this energy, man. I know he's like I watched him practice that freestyle for like the entire week we were there. You know, when we were in the hotel, he would literally just have the he would just be going over it and over it and over it. And he's getting nervous, but I'm like, dude, you like I get it to be nervous, that's fine. But like you're gonna you're gonna crush it. He really turned Bro, up near that. The first, so like You fucking crushed it. Dude, just the energy. Like it's a small studio, a bunch of studio lights. We're all sweating in there. Yeah. Energy was just unmatched. It's one of those things like you get like when you see that, you can understand why Quake's been doing music for eighteen years. Mm-hmm. He has seven albums. You know, he's like Doug like has all the accolades that he does because he's hungry for his passion. Mm-hmm. And he's been hungry forever. Yeah. And like, you know, I've had the same, not the same hunger at all, but even when I was younger, I used to make skate videos Mm -hmm. up until like 2015 and then 2015 hit, didn't make another video. And then, you know, but I, and you know, it's funny. I always used to want to make music videos back, back in the day when I was in junior high and high school, I used to hang out with people like Justin Provo who made beats and I was always like I always had a camera he was like man let's shoot something just never happened mm-hmm. you know here we are it's, it's, it's been uh, trickling in your life bro it's like 10 years like I have a picture on my Facebook of me with a camera and uh, Justin had a comment on it that was like yo we gotta shoot a music video and I wanted to do it so bad it just never happened so what's your well it, it, you went down to New York that obviously lit a new fire under your ass that you can't Bro, explain. that city, Nova Scotia's nothing. Nova Scotia's tiny. The hunger, like, the... I can understand why people go to New York to chase their dreams. Because mm-hmm. you can just be in the right place at the right time. We were in New York, right place, right time. Everything went flawlessly. Mm-hmm. Like, we got everything we wanted to do done. We went to Brooklyn... We got to go and see this studio. We went to Engine Room Audio. I met the dude who mastered everything for 50 Cent. Like, yeah. almost all of 50 Cent stuff, actually. Not, like, his old stuff, but... Like, almost all of it. Yeah. Mark, he was the man. Got to work with, you know, sit in the studio with Big Len. He's, like, this, like, up-and-coming producer. He's been doing stuff for, like, Young M.A. And, yeah. and you know, just right place, right time. It just all happened to fall. Like, if it's meant to be, it'll be. Yeah. And if you're going to put yourself in the situations to, like, have what you want happen out of life, like, that's all you can do. Like, I'm going to Miami in July for Rolling Loud, and I I bought my ticket, but I've been trying to get a hold of this guy. We've, like, sent, like, a couple of DMs back and forth. He's, like, super busy. He, you know Dominic Fike? No. He was uh, on, he was on Euphoria. Okay. The, and, is that a show? El, yeah. Yeah. El, he, uh, this dude, you know, directed a music video for him for that song that he did in Euphoria. He's, like, shot that free Larry Hoover show oh, okay. for uh, Kanye and Drake. Oh, okay. And, like, you so know. just the guys around. He has connections. He's network. He has a lot of connections. Yeah. And, I've you know, I just sent him a DM one day. I was like, hey, man, like, I want to find, like, a director to mentor under, like, what are the odds we can make this happen? Like, I've been crushing music videos. Like, I quit my job for this. This is, like, my passion. Like, I want it. He's like... he. I didn't even expect to get a DM back. I haven't got a DM back from any other director but him. Damn. Shouts out... I believe it's Carlos. Shouts out to him. He's the man. What'd he say? But he just hit me back. He was like, just stay the course. You're doing everything. So you just gotta, you know... Just keep doing it. Don't give keep up. Keep doing it. Don't give up. Keep the passion... And just stay the course because it's just gonna, it's just a time game, and yeah. you know I hit him back about shooting festivals because he shoots Rolling Loud and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. He was like, honestly, like if you get an artist that you can go in with, that's your in. So now that I'm going down to Rolling Loud, Miami, I'm like, cool. I'm gonna have I'm gonna start bugging him. I'm gonna be like, how can I come and shoot with you? Yeah. For Rolling Loud, like, I'll def it? I'll take the L on the six hundred dollar ticket. <laughs> yeah. To, to get the press pass to go down. I'll take the L. Yeah. That's fine. That $600 is nothing so compared to what I would get. 100%. But I'm putting myself in the situation for it to possibly happen. You're manifesting it. 
Bingo. That's so the goal. That's the thing. So what's next? Is that that's the that's the goal? You're gonna, you're gonna go to Rolling Loud. You gotta get it. At least two to three networks. You're gonna pop off there. And well, gonna even and that's the thing. Like I'm gonna go, and if things, if I don't get to shoot, that's fine. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna enjoy what it has to offer because I've never gotten to go to Rolling Loud. I've wanted to for years now, mm-hmm. but I've never been able to make it happen. So now, I'm somehow trying to make it happen. <laughs> but uh, you know, that's that's what that's what I want to do. I want to work in that industry, and mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of. There's a lot of people there that that do that. Like, people are paying big budgets for all these music videos down in the states. You know, you can get some bigger budget stuff up in Toronto, but I don't even want to go to Toronto because then I'd want to move down to the states in like a year or two, and I just feel like it. Would, you know, what's the point? Yeah. Why would Why would I make a stop in Toronto when I can just streamline to it. right to where I want to go? Hundred percent. So, you know, I'm just I'm just keep on trucking right now man that's all i want well that's just it i'm like it's it's fucking sick too because we're about 50 more minutes in so we can pretty much wrap it up on that and just ask a few questions to close it out to because i want to talk about mentality because i love talking about everything that we've been through everything we're going through mm-hmm. everything that we're going to get into because it's inevitable that each day that goes by we're both more successful and everyone's going happens. through it and everyone's just we all get the same 24 hours a day yeah and that's what i love this is that you can bitch about it or you can do something about it I mean, you can bitch about it and still do something about it. Oh, 100 percent. Totally bitch about it. Just be, just know when you're bitching and when you're when you need to get off your ass. But what would you say? Because I like to always end off with like a couple questions in regards to mental yeah, health and all this stuff like that. So I want to take a look at a couple banger ones. But what's the best piece of advice that sticks into your head? For what? To keep you going through all this. You know what I mean? Because it's like. Like you said, all you have to do now. Bro, stay not the even advice. It's just life's actually beautiful. Just enjoy it. You're only here for so long. And when you think about it, like if you were to die today, would you be happy with how you are? Yeah. And I would, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like if I was gone today, I'd be happy with what I've done, who I am, and you know, what I've tr- you know tried to do for people. And, and I, you know, I enjoyed life. I've enjoyed, you know, 90% of it, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, everyone, everyone gets through a little slice of shit, you yeah. know. Some people grow up harder than others. Some people lose parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. E- everyone, you know, has their shit to deal with. But you know, see, and that's the thing too, because it's like you're not open. You don't talk about that often, but it's like I do. Yeah, yeah. You do. When the situation's right, exactly. You're not one of those people that leaves with that. I've I've had a lot of time to think about it. Mm-hmm. I've definitely done a lot of um, soul searching. Not even soul searching, man. Uh, I've come to grips with what happened, you know, mm-hmm. for anyone who doesn't know, I lost my mom when I was 12, 12 or 13, whatever, 2007, I would and, have been, uh, 12, yeah, 2007, I would have been 12, 11, 12, yeah, but, uh, you know, it's not going to be one of those things I'm going to hold me back, I, one thing that I always think of is, uh, you know, Make her proud. Would okay. she be proud of what I'm doing right now? Hell yeah. Hundred percent. There's no doubt in my mind that she wouldn't be. I think I like right. No one million percent. There's not even a doubt. I really appreciate you sharing with that too. No, and that's the thing. So like I said, I've I've had a lot of time to like think and mm-hmm. and reflect on what's happened and you know if I'm am I gonna just sit here and be bummed on it? Yeah, I'm bummed. Yeah. I'm pissed. Deep down. I am very mad about it, but at the end of the like at the end of the day, I'm not. Mm-hmm. There's nothing I can do to change it, and it's one of those things like I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing to what would make her proud, because that's what that's like you said. Life is beautiful. You life is life. beautiful, man. It is. No, I love that. You Don't said get that. me wrong. Life is not as beautiful in Nova there's Scotia some- for like <laughs> December to like March. Yeah. is pretty rough. I was gonna say there's some shitty weather in there, but that's a phenomenal way to almost like they lead into this question: is what does mental health mean to you? Oh man, go see a therapist. Point blank. Damn. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Man, man. The, the stigma around it, like it's a bad thing. Mm-hmm. It's like everyone can benefit from talking to someone no matter how mentally uh, like healthy you are mm-hmm. there's always 
there's it's one of those things it's like almost oh like you go to therapy like it's a bad thing it's like dude like someone wants to work on themselves like don't rip them don't dog them because they're going to therapy i agree it's one of those things that's underrated it's expensive and it's difficult and it's a hard like first jump no i understand but anyone can benefit from talking to someone and i'm a firm believer in that and uh you know i i did i did some sessions when i was in school with one of the uh, she's not a teacher but she was like a Miss Adams, I don't remember what she yeah, was. It was like a support specialist or like a guy yeah. counselor of some sort where they had like special training to help with mental stuff. Well, and like me and Miss Adams got along really well because she also lost her mom very young. Mm. And then I don't remember Ali Kunzfeka. I don't remember how to say her last name. <laughs> I don't remember these people. But, I remember Miss Adams. But we did, me, her, and Miss Adams did a dozen-ish, maybe like eight sessions of just like grief counseling. And, you know, I, I reached out to Miss Adams a couple of years after and used some benefits from one of my old jobs and went and talked to someone for, you know, three, four, five sessions. And So, how, like, and, like, to talk about that, because that's fuck, I love that you brought that up because, like, I love when other people bring up that type of stuff because it's, like, it's always, I'm not going to say it's always the same tune that I'm talking on, but uh, coverage and getting, like, actually looking through your benefits and seeing that some, that some of this stuff is covered. Bro, when or, someone or, says that they're getting, say... 18 bucks an hour and they have full benefits at 18 bucks an hour if you use your benefits is like 26 dollars an hour yeah i know i the use benefit, that online yo if you don't use your massage like your <laughs> four massages a year or whatever like if you think about it like this a thousand dollars in massages that's 50 cents an hour for your full-time 2080 hours that you work in a year yeah that is uh 50 cents. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's small. Say you, you have 2,000 in dental coverage up to like 80%. Yeah. You pay the 20%, that's fine. But that is a whole dollar yeah. in your wage that is included. And people do not take advantage of it. I was looking through my benefits the other day and I have uh, speech therapy. I have a $500 a year credit for speech therapy. Yeah, and you I'm probably using, never use it. I'm, I know I am. I'm going to use it. Like but, but how long have you had that? I just found out about two weeks ago. I know, but how long have you, how long have you had the benefits? Well, I've had these benefits would have been similar to my other benefits and my other jobs for six, seven years. And you never knew. You see, that's what I'm saying, right? Six, seven years. I've well, always used my chiropractor, though. There's, I, there's always more to learn. And for stuff like that, like, people really got to look into it. Even the, well, that's why, that's why I wanted to stop and talk about it. Because you said you had, like, five to seven sessions. When I started going to therapy my first time, I did three times a week for, like, six, seven weeks six or seven now. Yeah. Yeah, and it was like very intensive. That was mainly related to the car accident. Well, when I did it again, I did it once a month for a year. Yeah, see, I did, I did bi-weekly for two months, maybe. You do learn a lot of stuff that helps, though. Dude, and it's like these people are trained to, you know, talk about this kind of thing. Like, I know some people, like, don't think talking to someone is useful, but, like, these like they've done like an extensive training to like understand how to cope how to deal with these situations mm -hmm. like there's a reason they get paid for it it's the reason why it's 150 to 200 dollars an hour to talk to these people well like there's a like a specialist in any field is expensive yeah if you want like someone to build a house you're not just gonna go and get anyone to do it you're going to look for the guy who says that he has, like, a hundred combined years of experience. of experience. You're going to pick that guy every time, or girl. You're going to pick them every time. Mm -hmm. Same same, same notion with the music videos. Like, same notion with being online coach. Well, I mean, music videos, I, haven't, I don't even have a year. Like, and that's what I mean, though. Like, you, like, when you start getting all the experience out of stuff, yeah. it's just like, it's the, you look for the best in the business. You look for the best. Well, and that's like, the thing. Like, I don't have the best prices. I'm not going to argue with someone who wants to pay less for what I do. No, not at all. But if you want the best work, you, like, it comes at a cost. We are, I actually just, uh, I'm waiting, I'll probably hear back Monday or Tuesday. I mean, this is going to come up. I'm going to release this one this Monday. Yeah. And I, uh, I might be losing, like, almost a $3,000 contract with the university of trained athletes because the guys are trying to lowball us hard 
like the first contract we did like was just more of like a test run to see how we're doing yeah and then he was like it's a different contract because it's off season versus uh, uh on season so it's like we're just not as intensive but like just the verbiage that they're using is trying to lowball you and i just straight up like replied with the emails it's like listen like i have i wholeheartedly understand what you're trying to do and i give you want this but i can't decrease my value yeah you know what i mean i have such confidence in my rhythms my procedures that i know each athlete's going to see the success they need i can't go any lower yeah and it's like because they're getting yeah they're, yeah well, and it's like i will work with someone on a price mm-hmm. like i know my value and i have a set price for a music video there is a bottom line and I'm like if if I like the song if I see potential in you or any of that jazz like I'll work with someone if they want to work with me cause like you know like- I know a lot of people can't throw 750 at a video yeah. I know a lot of people can't do it and that's fine mm-hmm. but you know for my first three months, I didn't make any money doing music videos. I was doing them for free. I was hitting up artists. I messaged Brandon. I DM'd him a big paragraph. And I was like, yo. Yeah, I remember like, that. Yeah, I, yeah. I really like your music. Like, I think you're talented. Let's work. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was, I would go to shows. I went to, a, the, what started it all, I went to a show with the Marquee. It was Kai Clayton, Jaden Austin, Jade Bennett was there. Who else? Someone else was there. A couple other people were there, and I was just like, that was when I met Kai, and I met Jaden, and me and Jaden just shot something random for a little back and blood freestyle that he hit that they did, and it was just like one of those things like, let's just do it. And it just happened to be one day I wasn't working, and we, I just popped over, and we crushed it in a day. Yeah. And then I did that video for Kai, and it was just like, cool. Like now I have like connections with a couple people who are in here. And then eventually Brandon hit me back, and then I did something with Brandon, and then uh, Fifi three, we did one with him, and then uh, I did some stuff with Maje, and then he he and Jaden both put the word out for Shea Pits, and she hit me up for her first video, and she was like the first person who was like down to pay me for my work, and she is the most consistent with like coming through with a storyboard knowing exactly what she wants for her videos Mm -hmm. and like being understanding of like why i charge a price yeah and she you know my first one with her was probably about a year ago today yeah i remember when uh, i came to the came to the house we were chopping it up and chang you know you're showing me a little bit uh yeah like like, 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 not showing me obviously because it was coming out but like just showing the clips you had like just like where you guys and it's just like you know Someone like her, like I'll 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 wiggle on a price with her any day of the week. Mm-hmm. She has all her videos done by me. Like it's like loyalty program kind yeah, of. Yes, networking. It's true now, right? You guys both have passion for it. You guys understand. Yeah, I'll probably uh, have like five, I think it's five videos with her. Maybe yeah. six. Well, that just goes back to like what we're talking about in terms of like just like when people like creating the value for yourself, like going do for the best work. It's like like even with being a coach, like. I'd say probably out of the 10 people that DM you, at least two to four are just like, well, how much charge? Just because. Just because, right? And it's oh, like, man, I don't even, like, the amount of DMs that I've gotten, like, asking for prices. I've had people that say, oh, yeah, like, cool, let's do it. And then, like, you know, a week goes by, I'll hit them up and be like, yo, so, like, I'm not, like, I'm not here to bug you. Like, if you want the video, let me know. Yeah, exactly. And then they're like, oh, yeah, well, like, I can't totally get the funds together. I'm like, cool, like, I'm not, you know... I get it. Yeah. It's, it's it's one of those things that's tough for... Did you bitch about that for a second, though? Because it's like, most of it just come from us. Like, cause we put a lot of time and effort in to have confidence in our value. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The people that's like, they don't see the value in what we offer. So that's on them. And that's what that's what well, we're Well, no, about. So, so let me backtrack one thing here. When you see value mm-hmm. for my video, yeah. that's for a music video. That might not be the right traction that someone else needs. Mm-hmm. Someone might want to gain, grow their Instagram, and one music video isn't going to do that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when artists want music videos, you should probably invest in some new gear. There's probably other stuff that you need to learn before you start crushing music videos. And I'm not saying that in like a rude way at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I'm saying is like, like if I want to bring value to someone, and that's what I've been doing with new, more commercial style clients is like, I don't want to just do a one-off video with someone, mm-hmm. 
do, you know, make like 800 bucks and then never do work with them again. Mm-hmm. And Dormy is the first client that I'm very seriously trying to like build the work relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to be able to have future work with them. I want to have like a good working relationship with them. I want to bring value to what they're doing. Mm-hmm. I understand. So like, you know, when, when they asked for like, uh, a vertical cut for their like a 15 second thing that they can advertise to on top of their video I was like yeah I know like I can cut that together like it'll be you know an added fee but like I'll make it reasonable for you guys I want to show you guys that this relationship works yeah and so like there's been a lot of back and forth with some of the guys there just like getting the revisions right and like you know I sent the finals off yesterday Sick. they're super pumped on all of it and they're like they're ready they want to do the next video and they're willing to pay like they they see how i work they've watched all of my you know working up to like the revisions they've seen all of it mm-hmm. and they and they I, I'm, I'm hoping they like how i work because we're doing a second one well yeah like and that that's kind of what i meant more so with the value was just like the people that are asking for the price is like they like the ones like the real conversations we're having are the people that are like you're actually having real conversations Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's never like a cold like transaction. I don't like it. We don't work with transactional purchases. Yeah, we work with networking. Like there's like because there's people that I've like told like no, I don't want to coach you. Like, I don't want to deal with you all the time. Like your mentality is just not for me. And I deal with a lot of mental health. And, and you're allowed to do that. Exactly. So it's like the most of the people that you're just, allowed to work with whoever you want. And that's the thing too. That's kind of what I meant about the value because most people that like not to knock on the people that are straight up asking for the prices, but maybe like your line of work's not for them. My type of coaching isn't for them. Like, you know what I mean? If you feel like you need, like, wait until you see somebody that, damn, like, I need to be that person. Or, like, you get that spark or something. You know what I mean? Like, cause I find people think we're rude. We're like, no, like, I'm not telling you my price. Or, like, we gotta have a conversation. Because, like, like you're saying, you want, like, you want someone to work with that you get along with. Boom. And that's just kind of what it's you, like. You want to enjoy the process. Every bit of it. Every time. And it's one of those things, like, I did a metal music video and like we didn't have like a whole lot of like we just had like the one scene there wasn't much to like work with like to make it dynamic and have a bunch of other stuff but I was like you know what I'll try it because I've only done rap Mm -hmm. and so you know I tried it it was I would have had a lot better of a time if we had like a second scene to mix in something different something to like make it stand out Video turned out good, but it was just one of those things, it's like, still, like, I still think I just like the hip-hop niche. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I remember when I was at the house the other day, we were joking about Dirk. Little Dirk and how you posted something on Instagram about Little Dirk in 2012. Yeah. Like, and, like but so it's like you've been, like, you've been, like, in that, like, Well, it's that. like Little Dirk hit, like, peak popularity, he dropped that song, uh, Laugh Now, Cry Later with Drake. Mm-hmm. Peak popularity, like, dude really went mainstream. And he, like, he's been hustling for 10 years. Yeah. He he started making music in, like, 2011. Yeah. People don't even know, like, Lil Durk with, like, the long, thin dreads. He got them cut off and he went to jail. Yeah, yeah. People don't even know. Yeah. But, you know, it took him that, like, eight or nine years of grinding. And, like, he was doing well. Mm-hmm. He was doing great. But, like, as soon as that stuff with Drake popped off and then he started doing... Like, you know, the, the tracks he was putting out, like, bangers, bangers. Yeah, like, like he really figured it out. But it took him eight years. Mm-hmm. And people don't want to put in that footwork, that eight years of footwork. That's what Think about it. If Quake, when he was young, just said, oh, well, you know, why don't I, you know. What would it be like 15-year-old Quake, 14-year-old Quake, you know, didn't put in that first eight years till he was 22 and he just, did, you know, didn't Man, even put it This in. makes me think of those memes. It's not even a meme, but they're realistic, where it's like the digging for gold, and like you quit, and it's like the one person that just hit it extra, hit struck gold. Oh, yeah, it's like the diamond. Yeah, and it's like, it's just so true because it's like, you, like you said, like you go down, like your networking opportunities, like you are, like you are captivating who you are as a whole, like in terms of your videos, making sure you like, you're trying to be more commercial and get like relationships, like, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's crazy because it's like, right place, right time, next time you go to Harlem. Who's going to walk to that door and shake your hand next? Do you know what I mean? Next time you go to Miami and you go to the Rolling Loud, it's like, no, you already have your fucking pass to go behind stage. You know what I mean? It's just crazy because it's yeah. like, same with Quake. It's like, if he, like, he just didn't give up. No matter where you see Quake at, it's Quake. So it's like, he, that's the consistent. Oh, yeah, people know. 
Yeah, and it's like, it's just like the pot goes back to the first thing at the beginning of the episode when we talked about when you went all June without eating, like they're making no money. It's like people don't, that's the eight years that we're talking about people putting behind the scenes before people are like, oh, you're just randomly walking in, you're gonna like millions, millions of dollars a year, like me. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, like Dirk. He went through all of that stuff for six, eight, ten years before Drake put him on that song, and everyone's like, "Oh my God, that he's fucking this dude." And it's like, no, it's like he's worked very hard. <laughs> and it's like that joke where everyone's like, they don't want to be that person who's like, "Oh yeah, like I was, I was a fan of him first. Like I was into him before it was cool and shit." Mm-hmm. It's like, it's just it doesn't actually matter. Mm-hmm. But it's cool to be like, yeah, like I. I've been a fan for a long time, and, like, now he's really, like, hit stardom and, like, really just crushed it. 100%. I want to end it off with one dope-ass question. And so we kind of talked about this a lot, but it's like, I don't know, I like this stuff, but it's like, what do you, there's like, it's kind of like a three-part question. I try to, I'm going to try to figure out how to Three-part question. It's like a little bit, because it's like, like, we've already talked about a little bit, but, like, after, like, after your time, 10, 15, 100 million years down the road, you're sitting at your top of your, your empire of your music business. You got, <laughs> you got, you, you're, you're the guy that's helping people get into this shit. What do you want to leave for yourself? What do I want to leave for myself? Like your legacy. Like what's your legacy? What do you want to leave? Like what do you want people to say about you? Like the legacy for yourself? What do you want, like just what do you want to let everyone know? What do you want to leave for your family? And there's another one, but I think they already answered. So that's just yourself and your family. Really? Your kids, I guess that's what they're going to do. Family and kids, same thing, but for yourself and your family. Honestly, man, I just want to leave being a good person. That's all. I just want to be a good person. I want people to just, I don't want it to be like he tried too hard or he was any of that. I like, it doesn't cause a dollar to be nice to someone. You know, that was one thing with my mom, like, she loved everyone. There was, like, a couple bad kids in, like, elementary. She was, like, they they were best friends with her. She loved them. They were just, you know, misunderstood kids. Mm -hmm. You know, just want to be a positive influence for people. That's all I want to leave for people. I I want someone to be able to look at me and be like, I want to be like him. He's like, he's awesome to be around kind of thing, you know? And I, I try and keep that relationship with everyone, you know? I love everyone that's in my life. Mm-hmm. Shouts out to everyone who's keeping me, you know, sane, because <laughs> without having all my friends around, I don't know what I'd be doing. Yeah. You know, you don't need friends to keep you in line, but it's nice to have, like, those go-to, like... It's family. It is family, and, you know... I just love every day. Love every day and love everybody. Well, I think you answered both of them there. And uh, yeah, man, we'll wrap it up right there. And I can't, can't even extend appreciation for you. I consider you one of my close friends and I get hyped Likewise, up. Likewise, man. It's one of those things. Uh, you never know where you're gonna go with people from high school, <laughs> man. No, no, no. I honestly love it. And you know, I hope to see more people from high school. Like, I love everyone that we went to school with. Yeah, I, I, I really genuinely enjoyed all of school. I loved Creighton Park. That was like I met like you know, some of my closest friends there. By High was bomb. Dartmouth High really get to like yeah, see what's going on. Dartmouth High was just a trip, man. Dartmouth High was wild. Yeah, I uh, I, I mainly had fun Dartmouth High in grade 12. This is the grade 10 I was in Toronto, grade 11 I was in the car accident. But grade 12, I remember, like, that's when I would have met you most. Yeah. Because, yeah, you were in grade 11. In the chem class. Yeah, yeah, just doing all this shit, yeah. yeah. It's so fucked up to think about that, because, like, <laughs> yeah, chem I'm class. Just with the, I'm just for the side. What's up? You, sat, you sat behind me. Yeah, I sat behind you. You sat by, uh, uh, what's his name? Hot man. Uh, I have a picture of his face in my, in my oh my, what's his name, bro? He plays soccer. Which Sean Drisdale? No, not Sean Drisdale. What's the show? No, no, no. Drisdale had black hair, right? Yeah. So, no, no. This guy had, uh, man, I have a picture. I'm going to send you a picture of my DM. It wasn't Brendan Halley, was it? No, no, no. I talked to Brendan quite a bit, actually. It was, uh, he hung in that group, though. He hung in that group. Logan Rosenberry? No, no, because no, I know his older brother. We're going to be here. I'm going to shut this up. I <laughs> we had a good fucking chat. <laughs>